Can anyone remember, or can everyone remember, when a takeaway coffee used to look like this? A few nods. Back then it was easy. All you had to worry about was the milk or the sugar. The complicated bit was holding the cup without scalding yourself. Now my name is Claire, Claire Bowen. I'm one half of the coffeepreneurs and a coffee shop specialist. I'm author of the best-selling book, The Daily Grind, How to Open and Run a Coffee Shop That Makes Money. And I'm co-founder of Cafe Success, the largest free online resource for independent coffee shops with my business partner and husband, Andrew. We work with coffee shops to open successfully, to become more profitable, and to expand and eventually to sell. I also run the Coffee Shop Bootcamp, which is a two-day intensive course for coffee shop owners to hone their business skills. In fact, we ran one last week in, um, in San Remo's cool studios in Hackney. And my sole aim is to stop independence failing. Now today, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to share with you the seven reasons, seven ways that you can beat the chains. Now wherever you open, the chains are going to follow. It's a sobering thought. But even if you open and you're the first success in an area, Nero will open two doors away from you. It's a sobering thought, and I know what that feels like, because in my own coffee business, I've had chains open a couple of doors away. But as an independent, you've got so many reasons and so many ways that you can actually beat the chains at their own game. Firstly, the basics. Now, you might all say that this is boring, but you've got to get the basics right. The number one reason people say they don't return to a coffee shop is poor hygiene. So your toilets must be spotless, your staff must be well-groomed, and your tables must be clean and clutter-free and sticky-free. You need good signage. Now, the number of times I see a coffee shop and I can't read their sign. They've got small letters, wood letters on a wood background, and they're trying to be too clever with their name. And you can't see what they actually do. Now, McDonald's are the experts at this. You can see their giant M from miles around. Now, I don't expect to see your signage from outer space, but I do expect just to read it and see it from across the road and know instantly what you do. You need that brand comfort. It's the reason when we're abroad, we all buy Coca-Cola. We know what we're going to get. So when people look into your coffee shop, do they know what they're going to get? Do they see instantly that they're going to get fabulous coffee wholesome food, and or an awesome cake. You've got to think of your layout. When somebody walks into your coffee shop, they've got to know what they're going to do. Where do they stand? Is it table service? Is it counter service? Where do I queue? You've got to spell it out to your customer and guide your customer through the experience. And this all happens at the very beginning of the planning stage of your coffee shop. I have a saying, don't make a dick out of your customer. You want to guide your guests. You don't want to make a fool out of them. The sights, the sounds, and the smell all play an important part. If it's too hot, if it's too cold, people won't stay very long or they won't come back. 
If you've got poor ventilation, you'll have high humidity and steamed up windows. And we've all been past that place that smelt bad and you didn't want to go in. After all, who wants to smell of rancid bacon fat all day? And finally, the colors, the noise, and the space. This has all got to be planned in the very beginning. So what does your customer expect to do when they come in? Do they expect to work on their laptop? Do they expect to have a meeting with a, a client? Or do they expect to just chill out? All this, what the customer expects, has to fit in with your branding. Advertising. Now, many independents think advertising is a dirty word. They believe that word of mouth advertising is a badge of honor. But as an independent, you have got such an advantage over the big chains at a local level. Social media, you can do really, really well. The giants cannot do social media at a local level. And you don't have to be everywhere, but you have to be somewhere. So choose your social platforms really, really well for your branding. And you only have to look on Instagram at the moment. There's some fantastic examples of people actually smashing it, the independent smashing it on Instagram. The big chains realize that they can't do social media at a local level. Just look at Weatherspoon. They recently turned off their social media because they said it was too impersonal. But it is personal. When it's local, it's very personal. The people who love you will tell everybody how good you are. And they become your super fans. And people are less likely to slag you off on social media if they see that you answer every post. They're less likely to give a bad review and leave a bad review if they can see from your comments that you care. And it doesn't just have to be you. Delegate to your team. Hand over the keys to your social media to your team. And it won't just be your voice, it will be their voice. And it'll be so much quirkier. You've obviously got to give them rules of what to post and what not to post, but with common sense, it can work really well. And we've done just that in our coffee shops, where we handed the keys over and saw an, a remarkable change to our social media. Testimonials. Now, who hasn't got a video camera in their pocket. So we've all got smartphones. So when co someone comes into your coffee shop and says, you've got the best coffee, or you've got the best breakfast, or you've got the best brunch, just say, hang on a minute, would you mind repeating it into my phone? And you'd be surprised how many people say yes. By having a testimonial, you will have a third-party endorsement. And you can't beat a third-party endorsement. Put all the clips together and post it on your social media, on your TripAdvisor, on your Facebook page. A third-party endorsement speaks volumes. Own your listing on TripAdvisor and Google+. And ask your customers to give you a five-star review. Not a four-star, a five-star review. And again, you'd be surprised how many people do it. You need a website. It doesn't have to be expensive, but you must have a website. Your website will bring everything together. All your social media, your, your TripAdvisor, your Google+, Plus, everything is brought together by your web page. And you want to give them the information. You want to give them the right posts, the right pictures, to get you on the right side of Google. So when you Google coffee shops, you appear on the, in the box on the right-hand side. 
and you also want to appear at the top of Google. So when people say, Google, what's the best coffee shop in your area? You want to be at the top. Now recently we did uh, a piece of research with 1,500 coffee shops and cafes in London. We looked at their web presence. And some of them had fantastic uh, websites, awesome. Some of them had a landing page, and some of them had a web page that said, don't bother coming. It was full of stock pictures, very painfully slow to load, and was awful. But what surprised us most in that research was that 54% of those coffee shops and cafes in London did not have a web page at all. They were not in control of their web reputation. So as an independent, you're going to be found in three ways. Firstly, by people walking past your front door. So it's got to look good. Secondly, by word of mouth. So you've got to have something for people to talk about. And thirdly, through the internet you've got to have a good Google ranking. Today with social media, all the social media want to do is get your money to do advertising. If you put an organic post on Facebook at the moment, only 2%, roughly 2% of your followers will see your organic post. So you must get a way of getting your guest details off social media and into your database and then you're in control. You need their name, their email address, their telephone number, and ideally their birthday, so you can send them a happy birthday and a free birthday cake, a piece of cake on their birthday. If you don't get their details off, you will be beholden to the great giant's social media and you will have to pay to get your name out there. Now the third one is reliability. Now, I call this the independent trap. It's where a lot of people come from corporate life, fed up with rules and regulations, and they want to open a coffee shop. They want it to be chilled and laid back with no rules. But you've got to have rules. And if you don't make those rules, I can guarantee your team will. You've got to have systems and processes in place so that everything has a system, a process for your team to follow. You need recipes that are easy to follow so that your products are easily replicated. After all, how are you going to control the cost of the ingredients? work out the margins and work out the prices if you don't have a recipe. And if you don't get these things right, you'll never open a second shop. So you may as well get everything right on day one with your system, running perfectly so you can move on to shop number two. Now, fabulous service starts with employing the right team. Now, you can train somebody to make an awesome cup of coffee, but you can't train the hospitality gene. They've either got it or they haven't. You all know what it feels like to receive good service, and you know what it feels like to receive bad service. As an independent, you can give so much love the big chains are so plastic. You can wow people with the plus ones and go that extra mile to make your customers' day. Now, innovation. Now, as an independent, you can innovate. You can just do it. You're not like the big corporates who have the corporate treacle to swim through. You don't have the 15 different departments that have to tick off 
the yes box to an idea. You can just do it. Be quirky and introduce new products. And you need to experiment. People get bored with the same thing. The number of times I see a, a, a restaurant or a coffee shop with the same menu because the owner said, my customers like that menu, so they don't want to change it. But people get bored, so you need to introduce something new pretty much every week in it or every month. You can have freshness in your food that the big chains cannot do. It's not in their business model. So your food needs to have the right margins. It must look and taste fantastic as well as being Instagrammable. So give, give service plus one. Allow your teams to go that extra plus one. Give them the authority to deal with issues so they can nip them in the bud. They can replace spilt drinks. They can give out free drink cards for next time. The big chains cannot cope with this sort of thing. To them, it's all about microseconds on the till. It's about the mystery shopper or worrying about targets. And they forget that their key job is to serve the customer. So remember, the plus one ethos is really, really important. And use technology. The technology available to the independent today was, up, up to a few years ago, was only available to the big boys. Technology can save you so much time and give you so much information. Things like good loyalty apps, good ordering apps, scheduling software, back office support, procurement systems, EPOS, online banking, and accounting software are all of it now available to you. And they all work together to give you more time to deal with your, to serve your customers. But remember, you don't have to employ people to do all these things. You can outsource to a virtual assistant. Now, it's all about the money. And so many people get it wrong from the start. There's absolutely no point in doing any of this stuff if you don't get the metrics right. Unless you get the rent and rates right. Unless you open in a clever location. Unless you have efficient methods of working. Unless you employ the right team and you schedule them at the right time. Unless your products have the right margin and unless you sell the right things, you will never make any money. We see so many small coffee shops opening. They think they've got a great site, but it's too small. Or their rates on their rent is too high. And it doesn't matter how good their business is. They can be busy from 9 o'clock in the morning from, to 5 o'clock at night. But they will never be able to turn over enough chairs and make enough money to pay their overheads and still make a decent profit. So you must get all these things right in the very, very beginning. Every independent has a unique story. It is a great advantage that you have over the big chains is your story. And every story needs to be told. And when you get that story right, you've got something really, really special that the, the chains can only dream about. You need hero products. So you think patty and bun, and you, and you think burgers. So what are you going to be famous for? 
Everything you sell should have a story. Now, can you remember back to quite a few years ago now to a Marks and Spencer's advert? It's not just any old chocolate pudding. It's a Marks and Spencer's chocolate pudding. Now, a lot of black faces here, so you're obviously all far too young. But seriously, look it up on YouTube when you get home. It's a really, really simple way of selling something with extra. If something looks and feels more expensive, you can charge more. So tell your story and make sure your team sticks to the, to the script. Ensure it's authentic. If it's not authentic, there's no point in having it in the first place. Tell your story on social media, on your website, in your coffee shop, in fact, everywhere. People love a great story. And when people come into your place, they're desperate to find out your name, what you do, what makes you different. So tell them that you want, they want to know where your coffee comes from, what that makes that cake a fabulous cake and not an ordinary cake. Tell your story. The other thing you can do is local charity work. Now, something we did in our coffee shops is that we were the first in the South to start a suspended coffee scheme. We decided to support a local homeless charity because our, our customers wanted to support local. And you can do the same. Find a charity that's local to you and support it and talk about it. And finally, own your area. You might not realize this, but people want to support an independent. So be the local hero. Talk to the hairdressers, the gym, the clothes shop across the road. Give away freebies. Give them a discount and give their customers a discount. And people love freebies. It'll put you in front of mind. So that when their customers come in and say, oh, where's the best place to get a coffee? You want those guys to say, well, there's only one place I'd go. Taxis are another one. Local radio and local papers. Now, journalists love local stories. They love to talk to you about anything that's going on locally. So talk to them, and then you can become the local expert. So in summary, the, don't forget the basics. Advertise. Be reliable and innovate. Don't forget the money. Talking points. And own your area. And we use our barista model when we work with, with coffee shops to go through everything in their coffee shops. So, please get the first question.